So let's get started. Um, I'm Dan Lehner. My talk is It's Time for a Ruby Edit. So, it's time for a Ruby Editor. What on earth am I talking about? Aren't there plenty of Ruby Editors out there, right? Well, when I say Ruby Editor, I have a particular kind of thing in mind. I'm thinking of a self-hosting editor. A self-hosting editor is an editor or an ID that's written in the same language that it's used to edit. So it's like a circuit. And there are quite a few of these. There are lots of these around. Almost certainly use them at one time or another. Some examples: um, the editor with the language, Padra, a Perl IDE, Eclipse, a Java IDE, Wing for Python. Um, another one is Smalltalk. Uh, the development environment is written in Smalltalk itself. So you've, you've, you've probably been using these, and these are popular editors. Why are self-hosting editors so interesting? A few reasons. First of all, integration. They're written in the same language that they're used for. They usually run in the, the same language runtime as the language you're using. So features such as syntax highlighting, um, syntax analysis or debugging are usually easier to come by and more powerful. It's also more convenient. You already know the language that your editor is written in, so if you want to extend it, you can do that very easily. It, it's a lot of fun. Sometimes you want to drop down and just mess around in your editor, you can do that. People enjoy tweaking and improving their editors, they can do that. Um, that relies on you actually liking the language that you use, but I think that for most of us here that should be true. And finally, um, there's a lot of power in having an editor that's implemented in the same language. What I mean by that is every editor ID has a plugin API. Now if plugin API is written in the same language as the editor is implemented in, that means you can usually do a lot more. You can write plugins that reach down to the guts of the editor and make changes. You're not limited by a language divide. So for all these reasons, self-hosting editors are, um, are popular. And they exist in the Ruby world as well. You've probably used at least one of them, especially if you started with Ruby a few years ago. Um, there's an ID called Freeride, which is um, pretty good. It's a stable IDE written in Ruby and used to edit Ruby. Um, it has very clean internals. We learned a lot from it. And sadly, now a dead project. Um, but an honorable place in Ruby history that I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with. A uh, more modern example of a Ruby, uh, self-hosting Ruby editor is Arcadia. Uh, Arcadia is, again, written in Ruby. It's aimed at Rubyists. It has some good features for editing Ruby, like a, there's an outline view you can see on the right, and um, a debugger, and so on. So if um, that use case is uh, particularly important to you, this might be a good choice. Uh, another self-hosting Ruby editor is Diacos. This is a Curses editor written in Ruby 1.9. So you might like to use it for when you shell into your servers and edit Ruby code on there. And again, extensible in Ruby. So self-hosting Ruby editors already exist, for sure. But sadly, they haven't seen a very wide adoption compared to other languages in particular. If I was to walk around here, down the aisles, and look at what you're all using to code right now, don't think I would see any one of these. And in fact, out of interest, has anyone used these? Does anyone use these? Which one do you use? I use Diacanos. Yeah. yeah, it's a good edit. Um, so not as popular as editors, self-hosting editors have been in other languages. And I think that's a little bit sad because it feels like we're missing something that other programs have in other languages. So what I'd like to introduce to you today is a new self-hosted Ruby editor called Redcar. Redcar is written almost entirely in Ruby. It runs on the JRuby platform using the SWT GUI toolkit, so it is cross-platform completely. You can install it as a gem, and if anyone would like to install it during this talk, uh, please feel free to threaten the Wi-Fi. And if you have any problems, I'll be happy to help you out. Or any questions, I'll be happy to answer them after the talk. Now what I'm going to do now is give a brief demo <coughs> of Redcar. I'm going to keep it short because you've all seen editors before. 
So, oh, this is going to be good. Okay. So, extremely good. Uh, let me just try and. Okay, this is going to be good. So, this is Redcar editing a project. It happens to be Redcar itself. I'm going to open up the file. And in that, you can see we have syntax highlighting. I can do some typing. Very useful. I can, <laughs> I've got snippets available. There is syntax checking, so if I was to type something stupid like this and save it, it should be marked, yep, as a bad syntax, and it'll tell you exactly what that is. Um, some simple feature that I want to show you, because I want to show you the implementation later, is go to line. Okay, I'm going to see how much of this I can do without looking at the screen. This is going to be interesting. Um, so you can see at the bottom, there's a go to line command. There's a bar that's popped up. Try and drag that up for you. I can just jump to the location. Pretty simple, but I want to show you how it works later. So, um, uh, slightly more useful, more interesting. If I put my cursor inside this storage word here and press Command G, it will take me to the definition of the class. If I select that and uh, open up search, I can see all occurrences of that in my project. This is comes up pretty quickly because Redcar has been indexing my project in the background using the C. Um, so the search is very fast, which is another good reason to be on JRuby um, because we were able to just get the Lucy jar, drop it in, and start using it. That was terrific um, with a small wrapper library that we got from someone. If we hadn't been on JRuby, getting a cross platform indexing solution working would have been a heck of a lot more work than the few days' work it was to get this working. Um, some <coughs> features that seem simple, but if you are using a particular editor, you may be feeling the lack of a split screen. <laughs> um, that's another interesting thing is we have, I can't see the menus, it's just causing problems. Uh, we have a Ruby record. So this is like a, an IRB session inside Redcar. I don't know what exactly I've there. <coughs> so, you can so you can execute code and uh, play around in here. I can play around with the Red Cart API. And say hello to you all. Like so. Um, so you can see this is really a nice way to fiddle around inside Red Car and get a handle on what APIs are like. Um, I pressed OK, so it returned an OK symbol. Um, something slightly more uh, useful. Excuse me while I type out this. A long thing. <laughs> that looks right. So I've got a document there. That's the find file dial document. And that's a Ruby object I can play around with. I can ask it for the line count. It tells me it's got 115 lines, which is correct. I can uh, do slightly more involved things with my document, such as I can run up across all the lines, replace each one and this block will be past the current line, so I can take that line and I can say modify it, or I can say if the line contains <coughs> definition, then let's add comment. Otherwise, we can leave it same. We need one more end. Yeah. So if I execute that, you notice you can do editing on multiple lines here um, because it's not only evaluated when we press command N. Yeah. So I've um, been able to, yeah, it's added definition to the end of every line. So you can use this to, to, to mess around, but you can also use this to 
to script the editor and to do more complex document manipulations that you might be interested in. It feels a lot like uh, the Firebug console if you've used Firefox. You know, that same kind of being able to just manipulate anything from a console. There's one more thing I want to show you in this demo, which I promised I would do in the abstract, and that is to create a new command for red card and add it to menus right here. So we're going to do that before we finish the demo. There's a my plugin plugin, which is an easy way to get started with red card and started adding new things. If I go to edit my plugin, it will open up and I can start playing with it. So the hello world command, you already saw how that was implemented, it's just a message box. We're going to add a new command. And what we're going to suppose is that for some reason you wanted to be able to reverse all the text in your document. Not something that comes up very often, which is why there's no command for it already. Um, we're going to implement this. To create a command in Redcar, you subclass the edit tab command, or the just a, the command class, and then you implement a execute method. The execute method contains the code that you run when the command is run. So what we're going to do is we have the doc available to us already here. So we're going to set the text on the document to be, well, the text the document currently has reversed. And actually, I'm going to use cars to make sure that respects the my characters as well. And that's that. We now have defined the command. We want to put it in the menus as well. So I'm going to add it to the menus DSL here. And you can see submenu plugins, submenu my plugin, and then two items. And you can see that that corresponds to these, these menu items here. So let's add the command we just created. And you can also see we have got auto complete there as well. So I've saved that, and now it has not shown up in the menus because what we need to do now is tell Redcar to reload this plugin to us. This is the plugin manager, it lists all the plugins in Redcar. You come down to my plugin and hit reload. Then we can come back to here, go find that again, and there's our new command in the menu. So if we hit reverse text with a bit of luck, that reverses the text. <laughs> you can see lots of delays. That's how you know it's really, it's really reversed it. Um, and then you can obviously put it back to how it was before. Good. So I hope that gave some idea of how easy it is to get started adding new things in Redcar. I believe with the current release there's a little thing which is that if you install the gem with sudo, you need to run Redcar and sudo to do this. I'm going to fix that for the next one because that's a bit irritating. Um, and that concludes the demo portion of the talk. So let's switch back to the presentation. Okay, great. Did you have a question? Yeah, if it's not too good. How easy would it be to add a uh, keystroke for that? Um, quite easy for if you wanted it in a menu. Just the keystroke on its own in a document um, isn't something we do yet. I'm planning a key, key binding overhaul as okay. soon as I get a chance. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, so everything you saw there, as I said, implemented in menu. Um, which is a body web card. Everything's implemented in menu. So, the APIs that are used to implement all these features, um, I can show you right now. So the speed bar example you saw of go to line, we'll call that a speed bar, similar to what you get in Firefox when you search for something. It looked like that. Very simple. Uh, there are some more complex ones. This is the simplest one. And the implementation of that, also very simple. If you want to create a speed bar like this in one of your plugins in Redcar, all you have to do is create a new class, the go to line speed bar, that inherits from the default speed bar class. And then for everything in the speed bar, you need to declare line by line exactly what it is. So the first thing in the speed bar is a go to line label. So we say that's what we got. Then there's a text box, then there's a button. And the block that's given to the button method is called when that button is pressed by the user. And because this is so simple, I can actually show you the implementation of this. First thing we do, we get the line number that the user wants to move to. Um, and that line method that's there in the block is automatically generated from the text box name that we gave. So that's how it gets the, the value of that when you press the button. We turn that into an integer, uh, shift it by one. Then we validate that it's in the correct bounds. And if it is, we move the cursor, scroll the window, 
and close the speed back. And that's the complete implementation for that, taken from Red Car, no cheating or anything. Um, so again, it's quite easy to create these kind of features in Red Car. Another example of an API I'd like to show you, yeah, these things. So you probably recognize these from TextMate. Um, the one on the top left is the fuzzy file finder. Uh, we also have a jump to class or method and switching themes. TextMate uses these in a few places and Redcar uses them all over the place because they're really a nice uh, input convention and uh, they're very easy to print in Redcar. We call them filter list dialogues because that's conceptually what you're doing, you're filtering and choosing from a list. And to create your own one of these, you subclass the filter list dialog and define two methods. Update list, give them a filter. So whenever the user types a new filter into that list, that method will be called and you can return a list back again, which we, it will populate it with. And the filter and rank bar is a helper method provided for you which implements the uh, sorting and uh, ranking algorithm. And then you also implement a selected method. And Redcar will call that when the user makes a selection and you can perform whatever action you want. So because these are really easy to create, we tend to use them for everything because, um, because they are a nice way of, of jumping around in places. Now I want to emphasize that these APIs aren't plugin APIs per se. Because in Redcar there's no such thing as a plugin API. There's just Redcar, there's just the APIs. And that's because in Redcar, everything is a plugin. Okay? There's no distinction between core features and extension features. We've got a lot of plugins in core. Here's a truncated list of some of them. Um, I'd like to expand on the plugins and show you a little bit of what's inside um, a Redcar plugin. Every Redcar plugin looks a little bit like a mini Ruby library. Right? It's got a lib directory with code inside. It has features and specs. It has tests just for that plugin. It has views. Um, so that search results you saw will be an ERB template that's rendered, so they live inside there as well. There's a plugin RB definition file, which lets tells Redcar exactly what the name of the plugin is, the version number, and whether it has any other dependencies for the plugins that it needs to be loaded. I said that the plugins have features. Here's an example of the kind of features we have. This is the feature that tests the auto pairer, which is when in Redcar you type a quote mark, it will automatically insert a closing quote. So you can see that test in the first scenario. When I open a new edit tab and I type quote, then the content should be quote, cursor, quote. Uh, similarly for parentheses. And then the final one is, if I type quote, then press backspace, shouldn't be anything there. It should have automatically removed the quote. And these go on and on, but we have these sort of features for pretty much every plugin in the system. And every API I showed you already has a set of helper steps. So you can do a full integration test of your new filter list dialog without having to know how the GUI works at all because you can use those steps to test it. And that's what we encourage people to do when they're writing up our plugins. So I've shown you a lot of code so far. I'd like to take a step back and talk a little bit about the philosophy of Redcar, right but there will be more code coming. Um, because so far, it's a bit like TextMate, but it's written in Ruby. Right? What's the actual point of this? So first of all, first and foremost, Redcar is an editor in the TextMate tradition. If you use Redcar, uh, sorry, if you use TextMate all the time, you might not have sat and thought about what makes it such a great editor. But the things that jump out to me as making TextMate great, it has great commands for text slinging. And sometimes when you think you've figured it all out, someone will show you some new thing, and, and you discover an, another layer. And um, so there's a lot of power there. TextMate has a philosophy of declarative extensions. So the themes, the grams, and the snippets they're all declared as XML. They're not code, which allows TextMate to remain a very small editor with very well-defined APIs rather than becoming huge and still support hundreds of languages. You can write TextMate commands in any language, just about, which means that for you, TextMate can usually be, is almost a self-hosting editor, and a lot of the commands in TextMate are written in Ruby, which is one of the reasons why it's so popular in our community. And finally, TextMate is built on regular expressions. The features are implemented in them, and if you know regular expressions, you'll get a lot more out of the editor. And I, I think it's true to say that before TextMate, editors and IDs did not make such um, common use of regular expressions. So that's something TextMate's brought as well. 
And there are a lot of editors now that exist since TextMate that very self-consciously place themselves inside the TextMate tradition because of the new ideas that TextMate did bring to editor. So I should say, from TextMate, we use TextMate's open source bundles. We use the syntax highlighting. We have TextMate themes and TextMate snippets. Because when our guy created TextMate, he made the bundles open source. So there's a lot of editors that use those now, and we do as well. So I should say thank you to Alan Alfgaard and to indeed anyone who's contributed to TextMate bundles because you've been part of what's helped us bootstrap Rekkan and uh, make it a great editor as well. So as well as all these features that TextMate has, there's a sort of philosophy, there's a sort of coherence to TextMate. And I can best illustrate that by showing you what TextMate isn't. With apologies to my friend who gave me this screenshot, who actually implemented a bunch of these, <laughs> these uh, plugins. Um, this, is, this is a powerful editor. You can tell. Look at it. You can feel the power. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not. And, it, and if you need any of the particular functionality on display there, then you need it. It's useful to you. You've got to have it. But it's still not the direction where the car is going in. When I'm using an ID like this, when I have used this sort of thing in the past, it's always felt to me like I'm sitting at a, at a pub table outside trying to do some work and I've got stacks of pages there. But it's a windy day, so anything could blow away at any moment. And I've got to keep my hand on this one and keep track of that one. And oh god, that one's going to blow away as well. And I've got to keep track of everything. If I lose anything for a second, I'm going to lose track of what's going on. So maybe that's just me, but that's how I feel when I use this kind of thing. I much prefer the TextMate uh, workflow. Perhaps just it better fits inside my tiny mind just to have these few elements with organizational structure on the side, with files to edit, and with an HTML preview there. So there's three things that TextMate has. Directories, files, and HTML previews. And I'm implementing these in Ruby. And I'm thinking, these things can be more general. Let's take directories to start with. Redcar has directory view. But at the same time, over there on the left, you don't just have directories, you can also have bookmarks. You can have rake tasks. And this is, these are examples of the kind of thing you get a lot in editors and IDEs, um, class outline views, to-do lists, and so on. And they're all examples of the dominant organizational metaphor that you get in editors and IDEs, which are trees. So in Redcar, we say, it's not just a directory you have over there. It's any kind of tree. It's where you keep all the things that organize your work. They live over here. And if you want to implement a new tree of your own, there are two classes for you to define. Um, you need a top-level tree, which contains the, uh, has a method called top, with the top-level elements. And then it's a recursive definition. Um, I'm going to use an example, an imaginary note-taking plugin, but it's not going to dwell on that too much. And then each row in the tree is a note, which has an icon, a text, and every row has to have children, which are more notes and also a leaf method to tell you whether it's at the bottom of the tree or not. And if you define those two classes and hand them to a red car, it'll put the tree you've implemented in the sidebar there for you. So they're very easy to create new ones if you want to. So we've generalized this organizational structure to any kind of tree. It's not just directories. Moving on, we do a similar thing with files. Implementing files, I'm thinking, well, it's only a coincidence that these files this could be any one of a number of things. You've already seen a couple of examples You've got, well, you've got a file, for one thing. You saw the record. That's also editable. And in general, there are lots of things you get in editors and IDs, which you just, they're, they're textual, and you want to be able to edit them. Uh, commit entries, or notes, or blog posts. And in Red Card, there are all examples of things called documents. And a document, the defining feature of a document is it's textual, you edit it, but at the same time, it's representative of some resource that sits behind the document. It might be a file, or it might be a running IMB instance, or it might be uh, a WordPress blog uh, installation API if you're editing blog posts. So to implement your own document, again, very simple. Actually, this is a little bit more than this, but this is the core of it. There's a title method that appears in the tab. You have to be able to read it from somewhere. So if it's the file, you're reading that from disk. You have to be able to commit it. So if it's a file, you're saving that to disk. In the case of a note-taking plugin, you might be reading that from a SQLite database of your notes. And maybe the, the notes are saved in the SQLite database as well. So if you have those two things, read and write, you've implemented your own document in Redcar. 
Let me see where I'm going. HTML previews. In TextMate, they're a static HTML file that gives the appearance of a dynamic nature. In Redcar, you can get much more complex interactions. So you already saw a search um, view with the search results come up. That's done inside an HTML view. You saw the plugin manager as well, and another one is the task manager. And in general, there are lots of things you might want to display with HTML in there to an idea, like documentation, like command output. And in Redcar, we call these things web views. I'm looking for a better name. In fact, my co commenters will be raising their eyebrows at the same because you won't find it anywhere in the source. But, um, but it seems descriptive of what they do. A web view in Redcar is, has two parts it has a Ruby controller, which is an object that you create, and it has a JavaScript side and an HTML side that lives inside the browser in that tab. And they can intercommunicate. The only restriction being that they have to communicate with objects that can be serialized as JSON. Let's take a look at how that looks. If you can imagine a, um, a plugin to, um, a view to search through all your notes in this imaginary note input. You define a note search controller. The index method that you define is special. It has to return the HTML to be displayed. And then you can define any other methods you want. So in this case, we're defining a search notes method that takes a query. That's it. That's instantiated and passed to Redcar, and it displays that in the web view. Then in the web view, there is some JavaScript, and the JavaScript might look something like this, a bit of jQuery. When you click on the search button, it can call that search notes method we defined on a JavaScript object called controller, which is made available by Redcar. And that's how you get that communication back and forth. So this is how the search view is implemented in Redcar that I showed you before. When you press the search button, it collects the JavaScript. It collect, the JavaScript collects the values from the form and calls a method on the Ruby control, and then receives the results back and inserts them in the script. So we've taken each of the three things from the TextMate workflow and generalized them, make them a little bit more powerful. So what we've done is created an opinionated editor. You can extend it in any way you want, but this is where different things live. We've got a single organizing tool, the tree. It's not completely general, but it's close. And if you have an overview of anything, um, an organizational view on anything in a plugin, they live over here, so you know where to find them. Editing text is the dominant interaction in any editor or ID, so that has a private place and it has its own thing. But again, it can be anything. And it, for everything else, any kind of custom interaction you need, or any kind of if you want to display output in an attractive way, you've got the web views. So with these three things, people are starting to create some really interesting plugins for a web class, some really complex things. And it's starting to look more and more like an IDE, which is something that I always said that it was never going to be. But it still feels like an editor, because it's opinionated about where things live. So if it is an IDE, it's an IDE that feels like an editor. It's a platform on which you can create whatever you want, but at the same time, everything remains comprehensible and your workflow remains simple and sane. I'd like to talk a little bit about the community around Redcar. Um, we have an open commit policy. So if you get a patch acceptable to master, you put on the uh, Redcar team on GitHub and you can commit to master straight away. So something that the Rubinius project did and the Padre project did to great success. And we now have um, seven contributors, seven regular contributors to Redcar. Uh, Tim, over there, is speaking today about adding C extensions to JRuby, which seems like an interesting topic, so you should head over to that. Of these seven people, Delisa, Alex, and Matt Charlie, this is their first Ruby project they've contributed to, which I hope means that Redcar is bringing more people into Ruby, which is great. And we have more than 35 other contributors as well, which has meant we've made, made a lot of progress over the last three or four months. These are the releases just from the last three or four months. I had hoped to get 0.9 out for this conference, but it's not quite there yet. Um, that will have the online project search, some JavaScript syntax checking, and, and some other things in there. That should be out soon. By which I mean Sunday, hopefully. Um, so given all the progress we've made, what's left? What opportunities are there for people who might be interested in contributing to Redcar? Well, we need a Ruby debugger. Um, there's lots of prior art on this, so you should be able to find some examples of what kind of thing to do. Um, we need breakpoints, and we need, uh, we need a debugger in there. The REPL 
It's currently very simple. It runs inside Redcar, you can't load your project code into it, so it can't be anything like a script console. We need to be able to load project code into that. You need to be able to send code from your documents into the REPL, and uh, that should be an interesting project to take on. Tectomate's a multi-language editor. I would like Redcar to be a multi-language editor as well. If any of you came to the Ruby Gems talk earlier today in this room, um, you'll know that a lot is possible with JVM in terms of integrating other languages on the JVM. We want to support that in Redcar. We have a closure, closure record already, um, but it's very simple. So if there's anyone here who, who, who uses Ruby but's interested, kind of interested in closure, I don't know if there would be anyone like that here, but if there are, come contribute to Redcar. You can add closure support, you'll be working with closure on a meta level, manipulating the runtime, and you'll learn a lot by doing that. I wish I actually have time to do that, to be honest. Um, another small thing, the web views are very manual. We're writing a lot of the HTML ourselves. If anyone here is interested in Rails 3, we'd love someone to come along and take action view helpers from Rails 3, which is supposed to be all wonderful and extensible now, and bring them into Redcar so that we can use them in the web views, and we can use them in the web controllers. Um, so if anyone's interested in Rails 3 and Redcar, that would be a fun project to take on, and you'd get something done quite quickly, I think, as well. I want to emphasize that this is not yet a 1.0 project, so it lacks a certain polish. There are some things that you'd expect to find that aren't there. For instance, like incremental search is one. We don't have that. We've also got quite a slow startup time. Sorry. Um, once Red Car is running, it's pretty quick. Um, loading a project is instantaneous, for instance, which is great. But I hope you can see past the rough edges and uh, see some potential here and come and join us and help make Red Car um, a great Ruby editor. And hopefully in future Ruby comps, I'll be able to walk down the aisles here, take a look at what people are using, and see them using a Ruby editor written in Ruby. So, thank you everyone for listening. If anyone has any questions, now's the time. Yes. How hard would it be to add uh, Emacs and VI key bindings? I said earlier that I'm planning a key binding overhaul. One of the things I'd like to do is to make swappable key maps. And I think doing that in such a way that you could say this command swaps out a key map for this one would enable the V mode because you could say when I press I, it swaps out that key map for a new set of key maps. So that's on the roadmap. Anyone else? Yes? So I understand the point of having an editor for Ruby and Ruby, mm -hmm. but now you're adding other language support, mm -hmm. which is interesting. It's focused on Ruby, but I wouldn't be averse to adding other languages on an equal footing. I suspect that it will always be written in Ruby in the core, and we'll have some kind of translation layer. So at the moment, focused on Ruby, but it shouldn't have to be. It's on the JVM. There's a lot of fun stuff we can do. Makes sense. Any other questions? Yes? What's the best way to uh, get up to speed with uh, the APIs? I would, what's the best way to get up to speed with the API? I would say look at some of the plugins. So you might like to look at the macros plugin, or you might like to look at the declarations plugin, which is the thing to jump to declaration. Um, looking at the code is still the best way of learning that right now. So, any question? Yeah. You had a question from earlier. Uh, yeah, actually, I've kind of abandoned that question. But uh, oh, sorry. one of the things that's interesting about self hosting editors, we were talking about this the other day, is that they have access to like the AST <coughs> of the language so that you can do uh, smarter refactoring and yeah. navigation. How much does Redcard support that, and, and what types of tricks can you do with refactoring from with your whole on a project? So the question was how to use um, JRuby in the JVM in Redcar to get better refactoring support. And something we do for that already is the syntax checker. That loads JRuby and uses the JRuby um, syntax <coughs> parser to check the syntax. Um, and for other languages as well, and we have a JavaScript checker as well. We use Rhino for that to do the JavaScript checker. And as for further interesting and fun refactoring things, I think that would be a 
very interesting project to take on, but no one's done much with that yet. Someone did integrate the RSense plugin, um, which gives you some more advanced code completion and I think some refactorings, but it's, it's the obvious thing to do. It's just there's a million and one things to do. Yes. Uh, what about how hard it would be to do a collaborative editor? Now, didn't someone, Tim, didn't someone say they were going to start working on that? What was that? Collaborative editor. Uh, yeah, well. <laughs> okay, just maybe that was just loose talk in IRC. Um, I, I know nothing about that. Um, in the sense that you can modify anything in the editor, and there's some very good hooks for adding new things. For instance, I suppose a, a, the back end of the document could be something clever in that regard. I think it would be as easy in regular as it would be in any, any editor. <coughs> yes? Is it possible to um, edit files using SFTP on other hosts? Uh, and if not, um, is that, how easy would that be? We have um, a remote project. Um, plugin, which is not very well maintained because as far as I'm aware none of the core committers actually use it. Um, but it does work, or it can be made to work quite easily. Um, I'm looking towards other ways of uh, using remote projects because in terms of all that loose indexing that's going on in the background, you won't get those features. So um, a much better option I'm exploring is using rsync to keep two repositories in close sync all the time, which allows you to have all the great, you know, project uh, features with a remote, remote project as well. But still to be decided on the best way to go with that. Yes? Uh, is there a, a go-to place for red car bundles or, or plugins? The red car repository, the red car organization on GitHub has a red car dash bundles repo in it. And that is a clone of the text make bundles with some minor modifications. Can you install? Uh, yes. You can like, I mean, can you bundle one to the cam and then distribute it using Ruby gems? Uh, not quite. Something I'd like to add. Especially if we add the other Ruby gems on every language support, that would be great. Yes? How easy it is to customize one of like, the tree view, for example? Like, can you use just the HTML to customize the way that works? Uh, the tree view is, this is how easy is it to customize the appearance of the tree. The tree view is a GUI widget. So, apart from changing the icons, at the moment, there's no support for reskinning that at all. Okay. Yeah. Yes? Okay, so I think this is a great editor for beginners because it's, uh, it's simple and especially because it's free. Yeah. But uh, it's not trivial to install. Are you guys planning to make an installer? Um, well, for Rubyists, um, I, I think for Rubyists it's quite easy to install as a gem. But before 1.0, I would like to get one click installers for the three platforms. But right now, just making it easy for Rubyists to install it as the priority. So, and yes, for beginners, one of the places that's being used um, in real life now is people who are doing Ruby training. For people who are new to Ruby, have just said, just download this. And they've been able to get up started and running a Ruby editor in their training sessions. So yeah, for, for beginners. Yeah. Anyone else? Sorry. Um, does it support like block editing like you do in TextMate? Like you can hold down option yeah. and select an area? Yeah. If you, if you um, select something press Control B, it will switch to a block selection. Control B goes back again. Oh. Or Command B in Mac. And when you're doing the code navigation, does it have like a stack where you can like navigate into no. method call? Right? Sounds like that. Can we write plug in here? Yeah. Yeah. For people that are using different gem sets, switching around a lot, um, is there some way to set it up so that installation on the right part. There's no support for that. It installs as a gem, so it should play fairly well with an RBM. Except there's a common resource directory for where it stores its jars, so you may run into a little bit of trouble. Try that and let us know how you get on. Yeah? I, I just want to comment. I've, I've used GitHubRDL. Sounds like a good experience with RBM. Then. Uh, you have a question. Uh, does it do split screen editing? Yes, it does. Uh, only two ways, vertically or horizontally. Yes. You, you can actually install it in a global gem set, which is available for all the gem sets. You can install so it in, for each, in for a global each, gem set. For each Ruby, you can just install it. 